Dhaka is the capital of Bangladesh, also known as the rickshaw capital of the world. Soon it might be known as the capital of climate refugees. Climate-related disasters have boosted an alarming number of migrants. Half a million come to this megacity each year to look for work opportunities and a better life. But most of them will end up in one of the many slums which are shattering the city. Heavy rain and lack of protecting infrastructure expose them for flooding. Lack of health services, school access and economic exploitation creates new generations of poor people. A relocation is still not an option in Bangladesh. We don't have a spare land where to locate the people. People migrating because of a difficult situation or loss of livelihood, they move to uh, other areas, closer cities or uh, urban setup, or uh, finally they come to Dhaka. Bangladesh is possibly the most vulnerable country in terms of climate change. We have done analysis for the whole of the country and we found right now the coastal belt is the most vulnerable one. And then comes the northwest. The Bay of Bengal is one of the most dangerous cyclone zones on earth. Climate change has led to even more frequent and intense cyclones, higher storm surges and one of the fastest rates of sea level rise on our planet. This will have enormous consequences for Bangladesh, which is one of the most densely populated countries in the world. Half of the 160 millions live in areas of 5 meters above sea level or less. We have experienced cyclones through ages. Like in 1970, half a million people died. 91, 138,000 people died. Therefore, we are prepared for it. But the magnitude of the storm surge is increasing. We are prepared for a 5 meter high storm surge. But we are having a 7 meter, 7.5 meter high storm surge. We are building cyclone shelters all over the country. But you go to the shelter, you save your life. What about your property? What about your crop? Kutubdiapara is an informal settlement named after the displaced people from the island Kutubdia, which is located off the east coast. About 30 to 40,000 climate refugees have come from the island to live here after major climate-related disasters. They are landless people living a hand-to-mouth existence in slum conditions. Many depend on seasonal work within fishing and dry fish farms. I lost my parents and grandparents and some of my relatives in 1991 cyclone. Almost 24 years ago, I came here with my village people and live here very poorly. Sometimes I drive rickshaw or tuk-tuk, fishing, and sometimes I bag this type of dry fish field. The dry fish business gives me $2 daily. I lost everything for the sea, my land, home, food, and domestic animal. The people in Kuchibdiyapara live without electricity and water main. They face many problems, like shortage of food and drinking water. Many children are missing out of school. The area is frequently flooded, which makes living conditions even worse. Surely I want to say I'm a climate refugee. I was in Kutubdia and had a nice family there. I know very well erosion, saline water, sea level rising, and cyclone destroyed all our worldly goods. I work this dry fish field six months a year and earn only $1.20 a day. Only Allah knows how we survive in this country. Not only government, but any NGO didn't come here after any kind of disaster. I don't send my children to school because I have no money, I have no food, and what not. Islands in the Bay of Bengal are shrinking at record speed due to increased sea level rise, higher waves, and erosion rate. In Cox's Bazar, observations show that the sea level have risen 20 centimeters over the past 20 years, which is three times faster than global average. Kyotubdia is located off the coast of Cox's Bazar and will disappear from the map within 2050 if the erosion continues at the current speed. From 1960s, I think it was more than 260 square kilometer, that area. And now it is, uh, I think, uh, close to 50 to 60 square kilometer only. So you can see now, almost one fifth of the island uh, is now remaining. As the sea is creeping in, people are losing their land and livelihood to the ocean. One of them is 64-year-old 
Abul Kashem. I was a rich man. I had agricultural land and a good home. But now I have nothing. I lost my paddy land. Saline water demolished everything. Sometime I work fishing. Sometime I drive a rickshaw. Hardly I can take care of my seven family members. My home was three or four kilometers before this sea. Shuvanath also had to move away from the lurking sea. She has tried to barricade her new house with sandbags. You see that barricade made of sandbags? It is only for protecting my house. But I know it is nothing against the sea babe. Maybe it is for my mental satisfaction. When we face flood here, we feel many problems, like cooking food, drinking water and sleeping. Sometimes we get government and NGO help during the flood, but that was not sufficient. And last two or three years, we didn't get anything. At the southern end of Kutubtiya, large areas have been submerged. It is characterized by large salt fields providing jobs for the men. But women here have no work opportunities. We had a better family home, agricultural land, and also many relatives. My father and my husband were cultivating rice, beet, and several types of vegetables. Now there is nothing, only saline water and salt field. Floods and storm come here several times in a year. I lost my home. Now I live in this dam. Here basically women have no work. We would like to make handmade local products so we can earn money and provide food to our families. Bangladesh used to be famous for its famines. Last time was in 1974. Since then, the country has tripled its food production. But now, climate change is threatening this positive development. In terms of food security, we are just in a balanced condition. So one big natural disaster like a big flood or a big drought is going to kill that balance. A lurking hazard is salinity intrusion. In Kintubdia, saline water has already destroyed two-thirds of agricultural land, limited inland fishing and drinking water supply. In the coastal belt, salt water has been reported to intrude 100 km inland through the river systems, with devastating impacts on agriculture, drinking water and health. In the southwestern part, as the salinity is creeping in, people are moving out. It is evidenced through population data. In 100 years' time, maybe one-fourth to maybe one-third of the country would become as saline as the sea. Result could be displacement and out-migration. It is already happening. You can now find slums are growing out in Dhaka with people who have lost their livelihood and lives in Hatia or Bhola. People in Bangladesh are bearing the brunt of climate change, for which they are not responsible. It is of great significance to reduce the greenhouse gases globally in order to limit the global temperature rise to 2 degrees. If not, large areas in Bangladesh and other densely populated countries and low-lying island states will become submerged, barren and unfit for human habitation. In turn, this will create massive human displacement and out-migration. How much of the country would be affected as the coastline moves in? I would say about one-third. Yeah. But this intervening land would have dikes to protect it against submergence. But we cannot fight with salinity.